What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you a look at King Arthur Legion 9. A standalone expansion essentially to King Arthur A Knight's Tale, a dark fantasy TRPG. And I'm able to bring you this preview courtesy of the game's developer and publisher Neocore Games. But it's worth noting that right now Legion 9 here does not officially have a release date. It is slated for Q1 of this year, which is basically from now through the end of April. So theoretically, it shouldn't be much longer unless it gets hit with a delay. Now, my understanding is the reason they decided to make this one in particular a standalone title is because while it is set in the same universe, that is to say, a dark fantasy imagining of Arthurian legend and Avalon and whatnot, it doesn't actually connect to the first game at all. So with all of that said, this one in particular is obviously Roman-themed, and we're going to be playing as one Gaius Julius Minto, a tribune of the undead Ninth Legion, who has has just recently discovered Avalon. The Ninth Legion was instructed by their dead emperor to find a way out of Tartarus. However, instead of finding that way out, they found their way to Avalon. And now that they're here, they plan on establishing what they call Eternal Rome in the city of Nova Roma, which involves re-establishing contact with your entire legion, which got scattered upon your arrival, and of course battling the local denizens such as the Pict tribes or the Fomorians. So gameplay-wise, this is essentially King Arthur A Knight's Tale. Most of it works identically. Except this time, the city of Nova Roma acts as our base of operations. We're going to be managing that in its entirety, which involves assigning your companions to leadership roles throughout the city and your war council. Each individual building allows you to perform tasks, usually involving upgrading your gear and abilities, while also performing some essential function, such as crafting and upgrading. And then you'll be going on missions where you'll be engaging in tactical turn-based combat and interacting with the world a little bit, as each mission is essentially a big map you get to explore, which sees you gaining all sorts of experience, finding items, loot, etc. Doing so is going to let you level up. There's a bunch of different heroes you'll be accumulating along your way, each with their own skills and upgrade paths available to them, unique equipment only for them, though obviously with a bit more of a Roman theme this time around, which is... I would say especially noteworthy for the game's morality system. A Knight's Tale had a more complicated morality system where this title is going to have a pretty basic one where it's essentially humanity or demonic. As you can see, our undead legion here isn't exactly entirely human, but you can decide how your tribune here rules, which involves making a bunch of decisions which influence the narrative in some way. Now here in this preview, the big choice you make towards the end of it is what deity to dedicate your city of Nova Roma to, Orcus or Vesta. Now unsurprisingly, with how similar everything else was to King Arthur, the combat here is pretty much identical despite the Roman theme, of course. You're going to have action points dedicated to regular action points and then movement action points. You can move and attack as necessary based on how you've been been upgrading your characters, you'll get a bunch of skill assignments, which determines what they're able to do. And theoretically, you want to use those as effectively as possible, buffing yourself, debuffing enemies. Positioning is important because you can be backstabbed in this game. And the armor mechanic makes its return. Basically, the type of armor your character is wearing determines how many armor points they have, and as they take damage in combat, armor will initially block that damage out to a point until it starts getting degraded and worn down to offering zero protection, at which point you'll have to stop by a campfire to either repair your armor or regain your health. So all of that to tell you, Legion 9 here does not reinvent the wheel gameplay-wise. In fact, in many ways, I would say it trims a lot of it down to more reasonable levels. So far from what I gather, there's only supposed to be six companions this time around. The morality system is simpler, just as a couple examples. Though, to be fair, that's likely what you would expect from a standalone expansion which is apparently going to be launching at $20, by the way. So what I would say is, first and foremost on my mind, having taken a look at this preview ahead of the game's launch, is what the progression curve is going to look like. Because one of my complaints about the base title was that the progression curve throughout the game was prone to a lot of spikiness because of how it was set up and how gear jumped in tiers as you went. So I'm hoping the actual release for this one will be much more balanced in comparison. 
But for the sake of wrapping this video up and not rambling on too long, it looks like Legion 9 here is going to be great if you enjoyed A Knight's Tale quite a bit, which a lot of people did, or you just want a Roman-themed campaign. That, though, is pretty much everything I have to say about this preview of King Arthur Legion 9. I certainly hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about it down in the comment section below, which, of course, means to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.